Welcome to A Journey Through Economic Times. This presentation is not just about history. It is really about the human experience and how the era that you live through can have a profound influence on your views as an investor. And let's start with our favorite historical subject at PIMCO, and that is bonds. This chart shows you the yield on the 10-year Treasury note going back to the early 60s. As you can see, interest rates are pretty low from a long-run historical perspective. Not quite the low for the series, but close. One question that investors are asking themselves is, are we finally at an inflection point? Is the long-run picture with inflation and yields changing? History has a few lessons for us as we think about the answer to that question. Here at PIMCO, we have observed that there are economic and political forces that drive change in the economy over time. For example, a shift in the long-running battle between free market capitalism and a more activist government can lead to certain growth and inflation outcomes. And growth and inflation can drive the performance of the financial markets. This is why, as a bond market investor, it can make sense to take a step back from time to time and make sure that we understand these secular forces. Okay, so let's do just that, and let's jump into our first era, and that is the emergence of the modern age, 1914 to 1929. World War I in the Roaring Twenties. It's boom time. It's the era of the J.P. Morgans and Rockefellers, mass production raising living standards. Stocks did well. They returned over 13% annualized. What did this first era teach us? Well, we saw how entrepreneurship transformed the economy. We also saw how human behavior, or what economist John Maynard Keynes called animal spirits, can really drive the markets. We also learned that patience can be rewarded. Long-term investors benefited by investing in growing businesses through the stock market. But of course, markets can ebb and flow. Next, we go to the Great Depression and the New Deal. Black Thursday, October 1929. The Dow Jones Industrial Average sank 64% in three days. By 1933, more than 10,000 banks had failed. Here we see a major swing in the long-running battle between free markets and government. The government responded here with ambitious regulation. In this era, bonds returned 4.2% annualized. Not bad in comparison with the negative 6% annual returns in stocks from 1929 to 1941. What did we learn in this era? Here too, we learned about investor psychology. It can be instructive to put ourselves in the shoes of those that lived through the losses of the depression. Many of us have heard the stories of our grandparents and great grandparents who grew up to be thrifty and resilient and perhaps a little skeptical of markets. We learn that government spending can play an important counter-cyclical role during a depression. It can offset weakness in the private sector. In fact, you can argue that this depression playbook is similar to what the government follows today when battling recessions or more recently a pandemic. Importantly, we also learned during this era that you should not put all of your eggs in one basket. Investors need a mix of aggressive and conservative investments like government bonds. Here you see an illustration of that. This chart shows you correlation between stocks and bonds going back to 1933. Correlation is a statistic that measures how the prices of two assets move together. Note how the prices of stocks and bonds do not always move together. In fact, the long-term correlation between these two assets is fairly low, fluctuating around that zero line. And that highlights the power of diversification, which is still the closest thing to a free lunch that exists in the financial markets. The next era in our preview is the great inflation leading up to 1980. This might be the type of inflationary environment that some investors are particularly worried about today. The government ran inflationary policy in the 70s because we needed a growing labor market for baby boomers. But external factors played a big role. OPEC imposed an embargo in 1973, 
energy prices spiked, and a wage price spiral followed. Some baby boomers and Gen Xers out there might recall waiting in gas lines and President Carter asking Americans to wear sweaters indoors. Paul Volcker at the Fed ultimately hiked the Fed funds rate to 20% in 1980 to break the back of that inflation. In this environment, real assets like oil and gold generated annualized returns in the high teens. What did this era teach us? A couple of things. We learned that demographic change, like the emergence of baby boomers, can really affect the economy and the financial markets. We learned that political leadership can be required to address tough issues like inflation and geopolitical conflicts. Lastly, we learned that real assets like real estate, commodities, and gold outperformed in this historical inflationary scenario. A consideration for those that are worried about inflationary overshoots in the years ahead. One of the fun parts about studying these different eras is seeing how different asset classes have performed over the decades. As you can see here, and as we would expect, stocks handily outperform bonds in most of the eight eras that we examine in our full presentation. But perhaps interesting for us in this bond boot camp program is the fact that bond returns were positive in each and every one of these eight eras, including periods with low inflation and high inflation. Bond returns ranged from 1.6% at the low end to 9.8% at the high end. This is a fact that investors sometimes forget. No one has a crystal ball, but one of the lessons of history seems to be that if you build a diversified portfolio with stocks, bonds, and real assets like commodities, you will likely be better prepared to navigate different economic environments, political regimes, and inflationary scenarios. For additional information, please contact your account manager or visit us at pimco.com slash advisor education.